these kind of entry tickets are the a method for me to force you to reflect. You won't do it on your own. It's obvious. So I'm forcing you to reflect. Do I understand this? Do I, can I articulate it? Never tell me I understand it, but I can't articulate it. You can't say it. You can't explain it. You probably don't understand it very well. Does that make sense? You might have some understanding. I'm not saying you don't, but you don't understand it well. If you understand it well, you can explain it. Right. Yeah. What trait shows up more? Yeah. If we put all your answers together, we get closer to the truth. Okay? All of them together. No one person had the right answer. And that's, again, the power of community thinking, the power of helping each other, participating, right? So let's take a look at what, a G, what it means to be dominant versus recessive. Now, we do have a problem, and that's the problem is that we live in the real world and we use these words dominant and recessive all the time. So somebody says someone's dominant, they are in charge, right? This leads to problems in your thinking. This leads to misunderstandings. So it, it, the misunderstanding when people think of dominant as being in charge is I've had more than one student say to me, well, the gene that the father had is dominant. Why would they say that? Because the, in their mind, in their, ho- in their household, the father was dominant over everyone. Right? So they thought, well, his genes would be dominant, correct? This is the, this is the failure in, in separating what we're talking about here with understanding versus trying to apply this language in a lazy way. So dominant does not mean that. It does not mean stronger. It doesn't mean uh, they're in charge, right? And by the way, in my household, my mother would have been in charge so so in understanding the misunderstanding is that dominance is not the dominance that you're used to So it's not the word it's not the word we use in the common tongue. It's what we use the dominance in this case it's a it's a biological term. Uh, so what we mean is this. You got two gene you got two chromosomes. Chromosome number let's call it number 1. By the way there's 23 different chromosomes. 23 different chromosomes. You get one from, I'm going to use this for mom, this symbol. You know what? I'm just going to write mom. You got one from mom, and you got another one from dad. Same chromosome, same genes, in the same place. Sometimes they're changed, but for the most part, you have the same genes in the same place. The reason that they're the same genes in the same place is because we're one species. That's what allows us to exchange DNA. You'll see when we go over meiosis today, tomorrow, and the next day. This is what allows us, right, to be able to have babies with one another. If they were different genes on different chromosomes, we wouldn't be able to do it. You'd have babies without a head. You'd have babies without a toe because you'd get the wrong combination of genes. So everything has to be in its place. Uh, Many diseases can occur uh, because of this inversion. Uh, you get a gene misplaced on a wrong chromosome. Uh, chromosomes get cut up and moved around. Again, chromosome is just one DNA molecule. We know that, right? At this point, you know that there's a five prime end on this side and three prime end on that side. It's a double helix. 
So you have a three prime and a five prime for both chromosomes. So I'm just going over what we know before we try to answer what we don't know. So in order to be reflective, what I need to know when I'm trying to reflect on what I understand about a question, and the question again here is, what does it mean to be dominant and recessive? I have to think about all the words you all said, genes, mutations, uh, chromosomes, shows up more, traits, right? All these things. And, the, and But I also have to think about the stuff you didn't mention, the stuff we've been learning about all this time. So these are DNA molecules. And in these DNA molecules, they go from five prime to three prime on one strand and then the other. And somewhere along here, there's a gene. There's a gene that codes for something. Who knows what that thing is? It could be anything. But one thing we do know, we do know that this is a gene. And that means, that means in your brain, that automatically should know, you should be quick to think that that means that that gene is transcribed to DNA, uh, to RNA, and then maybe, maybe that gene gets translated to a what? protein. And this is it. This is the star of the show. I've been saying it for quite some time now. We've been talking about it forever. But there's your star. The protein. The enzyme. The structure. The star of the show. Sure, the gene commanded what the protein looks like. But the protein is what you call, this is what will determine, determines the trait. Now, this is a word, a vocabulary word. It's not up on the vocabulary definition. We can add it. Can someone have good handwriting? Go up there and write uh, trait in the vocabulary definitions. And you might as well add gene as well. What determines the, the, the protein is what determines the trait. So if you have red hair, you have one protein. If you have blue hair, you have another protein. If you're, if you're tall, you have one enzyme, one hormone. If you're shorter, you have another hormone. So you have these proteins that do stuff, right? Proteins do stuff in your body. And the gene controls the protein, correct? All right. Now, before we can go, we have to think about, we have to, again, be more reflective here for a second. We have to be reflective. We have these two genes, this gene. We said they were the same species, so this is the same gene in the same place on this chromosome. This is chromosome number one. There's 23 pairs of chromosomes. This is one pair, chromosome number one. And... Uh, but what's missing? This is the same gene on the same chromosome. One came from mom, one came from dad. How can we, what, what about this dominant recessive? How can one be dominant and the other recessive? How does that work? Are these genes the same? No, no. No, not necessarily. They could be, but they don't have to be. They can have slight differences. Small, who was it that said it over here? Small mutations or large mutations, right? So the gene could have been changed here. By the way, that's your homework today. It's being printed. You're going you're gonna to work on practicing your genetic mutations. Okay? Like point mutations? Point mutations, frame shifts, inversions, that kind of thing. Your practice going from DNA to mRNA to protein, right? Okay. In any case, these two have to be, they can be slightly different. So when you did the Punnett square, 
least some of you mentioned when you said genetics, right? You remember having, you know, uh, I'm just going to make this up. A big A from mom? It could be a little A from dad. It could be a big A or a little A from dad. That's what you learned in middle school. It's actually more complicated. It could be A, big A, little A, little A star, big A star. Yeah, we're going to go over it right now. We're going to do it. You don't have to have just two different versions. This, who's to say you're not, you don't have 10 different mutations? Who's to say you don't have 10 different mutations in that, in that gene? It's not really a star. I'm just making it that up. It's little i. We'll, 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 you'll see. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. So you have these proteins, these genes. Oh, my God. So these genes, big A little or little a, is the same gene... In other words, it makes the protein's function is the same. This, now say that word strong. Just don't say it. So the protein, the protein that is that little a or that a the a gene is making can be skin color. It can be it can impact height. It can impact color of your eyes. It can impact toe size. I don't know. Everything's controlled by gene. Everything's control. Everything that is who you are, at least in the beginning, right? I'm not talking about learning, but everything that is that is what makes you up, that works. The little cogs in your machine are all defined by this gene, what, by these genes, and this gene defines one cog. This uh, this protein is going to impact that trait. Height, color, whatever. Got it? Is that clear? First, before we get going yes. to questions. Okay, question. Um, when you say like both genes are not the same, so let's say determining skin color, you have a gene from your mom and a gene from your dad. If a recessive gene from your mom, like, what if you? It is not a good example. Stop right there. We're going to stop right there. Skin color is not a good example in humans because skin color is controlled by at least eight different genes. That's why there's 64 different shades of uh, human. 64, minimum. Not including albino. So you have everything. There's all kind, It's not black or white. There's 64 different shades of human because there's literally eight different genes impacting the skin color. You're not mixing black and white and getting middle. You're getting, you're, what you're doing is you're having an impact of, 60, of eight different genes. Each gene can have a dominant or recessive. So to see how many different combinations you can have, correct? To get these 64 different shades of human skin tone. Eye color, no. Also controlled by, mul these are multiple genes impacting a trait. This, we're going to use a simple, simple version, what Mendel used. Mendel, Mendel was very lucky. He chose genes. He chose traits that were controlled by simple genes, simple inheritance. That's what we call Mendelian genetics. When you're dealing with simple, we're going to get into the complicated, but let's start with the simple first. So we got A, it could either be A, big A or little A, just a mutation, but this gene controls that protein. Is that clear to everybody so far? So let's, let's look at an example, and then we'll go back and we'll try to define dominant and recessive. I'm going to give you an oddball. I'm going to give you a non-Mendelian example, not an easy example. Not as easy, but I think it's clear, and I think I like it because it's, it's related directly to you. Who here knows their blood type? I am O blood type. What are you? O positive, I'm O positive. We can give blood to each other. You know, we can't accept blood from anybody who's not O. Anybody else knows? Well, who knows what the blood types are? You should know what blood type you are, by the way. B is one. A. A negative, A positive. A positive. Let's, let's forget the positive and negative for a second. A, B, O. A, B, O. This is only three. Three blood types in humans, ABO. Positives and negatives is other things. So I've described this to you before, but I'll do it again. You have a cell. 
We said there's these cells. We said that the cells have a cell membrane. You know that. And that these little, there's these integral membrane proteins that stick out of the cell. Mm -hmm. So if they look like this, if these proteins, what does that mean? If it's a protein, what is it controlled by? A gene. A gene. If it's a protein, it's a gene. And we said one of the things, one of the useful things about integral membrane proteins or proteins that stick out of the cell is they can act as signaling molecules, they can act as receptors, they can act to identify cells as belonging to you. Tissue rejection. Uh, blood type is one of those things. It's a, if you get the wrong blood type, your, your tissue is rejected and you die because your blood, your blood attacks the blood that's been given to you. So this would be, this would be a blood type. Okay, if it looks like this. Now, if we have a different So if, if you have circles instead of triangles, so you change the protein, which means what? A different gene. It's not a different gene. It's the same gene because it's in the same place in the same chromosome, and they both control and they both control a cell surface marker, right? These are markers. It would be a different protein is correct. Why is it different? Why is the protein different? What happened to the DNA? It was a mutation. So there's some mutation here. Which one mutated? Which one is the original? Who knows? Who cares? It's the point is there are mutations. So this would be B blood type. They're different. Different shapes. Yeah. This is really easy. I'm making the shapes easy because I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna sit here and find the crazy shape that the, pro the actual protein is and then put it on the screen. I think that doesn't, do you can look it up. We have pictures of them. Uh, Wait, what did what, we're not gonna answer questions right now. We're just writing and thinking and reflecting. If you have a question, you're writing it down in the margin in your Cornell notes. And then of course you have O blood type and o, those of us with O blood type, this is what our cells look like. We don't have any surface markers. No markers, no what we call, these are called, uh, this is kind of a little extra, but these are called antigens. Antigens are surface markers that tell your, that tell your body, hey, this is me, bless you. Don't attack it, it's me, it's cool. This blood belongs to us, we're good, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about it in a second, but yes, you're right. So, we're talking right now how we got here. We're taking this one step at a time. We're not jumping around and confusing ourselves. That's how we get lost, and that's how we get wrong answers. We're going to take it one step at a time. So, each, what does that suggest if you have three different traits? Same gene... What do we call that when the same gene, three different forms of the same gene, three different mutations? What do we call a mutation it's of a gene? So you have a, what do we call it? I'm going to give it to you. You may or may not know. Say what? You've heard of the word probably. Allele. Allele. You probably heard it when you looked at Punnett squares, big A, little a. Alleles are different versions of the gene. They're different versions of genes, all right? And here we don't have two, here we have three versions. So you have, you have A version, version A, that's gonna, that's gonna produce, that you know, has A, T, G, C, A, I'm making this up, T, A, T, whatever. And we can look it up, but I'm not going to. And it's going to be very long. 
And A, that gets you this protein that looks like, like this. A blood type is a triangle in this case, in this example. I'm making this up. I said it three or four times. B blood type, something happened, mutation. I don't know if it was a mutation. Uh, some type of mutation happened. But instead of a triangle, you ended up with a circle. As time went on, and it was probably O blood type. Well, maybe not. I don't know who was, what was the first, but whatever. O blood type, there was a mutation. that led to what we call, uh, let, me th let me just, O blood type is what we, you know, what we've called already as a nonsense mutation. What does that mean, nonsense? Nonsense, nonsense mutation. It doesn't make sense. What does that mean in terms of, of making a protein? DNA to RNA to protein. What does a nonsense mutation do? Would it not, work? not work. No protein. See, everybody should know that. So how did we do that? How did that happen? That happened because the mutation led to stop codon early on. Oh, yeah. The stop codon, shifting a stop coding, codon early on stops the protein from being made. So early on, this gene instead of making whatever amino acid chain got to stop early and that means there's no there's nothing on that surface so nonsense mutation means no protein no protein because uh, and early stop So there's nothing on the cell surface for people with this gene. Now, here's your problem. You have two genes. I mean, I mean you have, I'm sorry, you have one gene, three alleles. Each of these is an allele, correct? You can inherit any of these. So what happens if you have two A's that's easy to you got, like so what are the different possible combinations so possible combinations what would they be let's let's think about it you can have uh, so mom and dad there's two options you only have two options mom and dad some beasts have multiple uh, sexes like there's tetramethromophilus six different seven different mating types you can they have they're not male female there's just seven we just number them right but we're in humans is mom and dad okay so mom and dad dad could give you with dad gave you an A and mom gave you an A and dad gave you an A that version of the this version of the gene right a, then your trait, you have what kind of blood type? Your trait, what you see. By the way, trait is what you see. This, the, the, the result. The trait is what blood type? A. A blood type. Not heart, correct? If mom gave you a B and dad gave you a B, then you have B blood type. Uh, not not hard. Not hard at all. However, well, let me give you another one, an e another easy one. If mom was an O and dad was an O, then you're O blood type. Those are easy. So what if mom gave B and dad gave A? Well, you'd have B, you'd be 
Well, you would have, think about it. What, would it, what is happening here? Think about what's happening. You have a, a cell and on the, no, you need to think because it, cause you do know, you, or at least you can make a good guess. Ah, there you go. Because here on this cell, you have, you have both. You have one gene that's making, this isn't dominant at all. This is not dominant or recessive. Right? There is AB blood type there. Yeah, there are. There's a lot of people with AB blood type. The Luckily, the most common is O. I don't know what the rarest is. You can look that up. You can look that up. But, and I can, so, give me one more second and then I'll let you go. This is why I push you to get going in the morning. This is why I get frustrated, right? But this is AB blood type. Give me one more second. So that's O. Now, what if, but what happens if you have A and then O? It's just A. And then, because O is nothing. And what if, you, what if you're, what if you're B and O? It's just BB. So write that down. We'll continue this discussion tomorrow. I think it was a good day today. We got something done. I just want to get it started earlier. We can't afford wasting time. So we can just set up quickly. That would be appreciated. But you, great participation. Thank you for helping. Did you get the copies? I couldn't stay for the Huh? If you have B blood type, you could have a BO. So you can see in each of these... In each of these, you can see that there's multiple ways. Why is there still talking when I don't have, I have people that don't understand and there's still people not participating, still talking, I don't get it. So you have A blood type, the easy way is that both parents, but you have two A alleles, B blood type, you have two B alleles, O blood type, you have two O alleles. A B blood uh, alleles, you get A B blood type, AO means you have A blood type, so there's two ways to get A. Please make a note of that. A and A. And two ways to make B, B and B. So that's why just because you have O, it does not mean that mom and dad happen to have O. They just had to have the allele. The allele. There's what? There's three alleles, and there's these many different combinations, right? Six. You have six different combinations, but not six blood types, right? So you have A, B, O, A, B. Those four, those are the four blood types. A, B, O, B, and A. You can get diff six different ways. You can get them in six different ways. And not six... That's this six, but you know you can invert them as well, right? You can have dad could give you the A, uh, the B, and mom the A, right? So there's more than six, but at least this many, yeah. So there's how many ways to get all the blood types? Say what? How many ways to get all the You could get O blood type for both your parents giving you an O, right? If your parent looked like this, your parents look like get both had two O's then you're definitely O, you have no choice but to be O. If your parent, one parent is AO, both your parents can have AO, and then you can be an O, right? And then one of your children, one of your brothers could be A, or sister could be an A. Uh, one of your parents could be, both your parents can be BO. And you could end up with O blood type, right? Or one parent could be AO and one parent could be BO, and you can end up with O blood type. Or you can end up with A blood type, or B blood type, or AB blood type, or O blood type. So you can't really tell without doing the Punnett square. You got, that's why we do a Punnett square. And if you want to look at blood types, you can, the, all the Punnett square tells you is what are the odds? What are the odds? But to understand all this, we have to first look at meiosis, which is on the board, right? This is a vocabulary term. We have to understand exactly what happens in meiosis, so we understand what the distribution is. So we can understand what the different combinations would end up being. 
Still, there's just this background talking, talking, talking. So, and phone usage, which is sent, because you're upperclassmen, but we'll move on. In any case, possible co uh, combinations to get these different blood groups and ABO blood groups. Now, well, the way we do it, the way we look at it, is if you're either, when we talk about your genes, you can be A, you can be I, A, I, B, or I, I. So interestingly, these two are what we call co-dominant. Because they both show up. Dominant means if, this is what dominant means in biology, in genetics specifically. Dominant means if it's there, you see it. Period. Period. If it's there, you see it. Here with AB, you see, if, it, if you have an A and a B, you see A and then B, correct? You see AB. Correct? Yes or no? So codominant means you see codominant means there's two of them that you see both. However, I, this one is recessive. So, so to get you to talk, I just have to sneeze. Got it. Co codominant codominant is they share they show up because they're there. Period. Recessive means you need two of them. To show up. So for you to get, for you to get O blood type, you need two alleles that have the recessive form. Yeah. Can you say that dominant are expressed when dominant? That's what she said, yeah. Dominant are always, exp well, they're both expressed. So this the, the problem with her definition said nobody gave a good definition. Nobody, not even I, give an A definition. But just to be clear, dominant means they show. It shows, period. It can be expressed. You could have it expressed but not see it. Right? So you could have, it, you could have a, pro, uh, a protein expressed but not see the trait. So it's, uh, for instance, um, you can express a protein, in other words, translate it into a protein. It could be there, it just won't work. What if you made a pigment that doesn't have color? The protein's there, it's expressed. You just don't see the result. So you have to be careful. Dominant just means you see it. Dominant only is only really about the trait, only about the thing you see. Recessive really is just about the trait. It's only, it only gives, informs you, gives you information about what's going on in the genes. To say that a gene and allele is recessive or dominant is a little, mis, a little bit of a misnomer. But let's go ahead and do the Punnett square really quickly. What if, now I think if you see, if I had uh, little i a and little i a, and I cross it with another little i a, little i a, right? I think everybody agrees it's going to be a blood type. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a problem with that. I'm not going to bother doing that cross. However, if I do this cross, again, what is this Punnett square? We'll understand better after we do meiosis. If we look at a Punnett square, we have little i a, little i cross with little i b, little i b. Now what all the kids, 100% of the kids are what? A, B. <coughs> Do you understand that? Yeah. All the kids are, are going to, 100% of these kids are going to be A, B because you have little I, A, little I, B, little I, A, little I, B. Uh, I forget. I think it's, uh, I forget, interglobulin? I'm not, I don't remember. So 100% of your 
progeny are going to have AB. Are we all clear on that? All right. So now what's another possibility here? Another possibility is we can cross two ABs together. No. We can do little i, a, we'll, we'll cover them when we go over meiosis. Little i, b, little i, a, little i, b. Crossing in this case means you're, you're mixing, you're having sex and producing offspring. So if you, if you combine, if mom has A and B alleles and she ha gives baby, has babies, then she, what she can do is she can produce, if she and her husband, who if they're both heterozygotes, by the way, these are called heterozygote. So these are, they're both heterozygotes, two heterozygotes gives us one brother, one quarter of the population is going to be little a, little a. One half the population is going to be a, b. This is going to be a, b. And one quarter of the, po of the population will be b. So you have statistically 25% of the children will be a blood type, 25% b and 50% AB. No O's so far. I hope you see that if I give you a cross with just one person having an O and the other people having any combination, you also get no O's. Because how many O's alleles do you need to get an O blood type? Two alleles. So that means mom has to have an O allele and dad has an O allele. So if we, that cross looks like this. This is a cross, by the way. That's what Punnett Square is showing you, is the cross between two individuals. So this can be anything, but one of them has to be O. This can be anything, but one of them has to be O. The other, the other I can be A, B. I'm just going to pick A, and I'm just going to go ahead for giggles. I'm going to put B. All right, so mom is B, dad is A, but they each have an O allele. Well, then one quarter of their babies is going to be O blood type. One quarter of the babies are going to be, what blood type is this? B blood type. One quarter of the babies are going to be this. What, are the, what blood type is this? A. And one quarter of the babies are going to be the this AB blood type. So you can have two parents give, having babies with AB, B, A, and O. So that's why I said in the beginning, you can't tell without further information what's going on. That's why we do pedigrees. That's why we do blood tests, look, do genetic sequences, do antigen tests, that kind of thing. In fact, I believe don't, I'm pretty sure it was an African-American physician who first came, uh, worked out the way to do a blood type, blood type, saved billions of, uh, millions of lives, probably billions by now.